Hello and welcome back. This is episode five of building up a narrow gauge railway layout. It's a modular series. I hope that you're enjoying it so far. If you haven't, go check it out. We've done four episodes, which is building up the baseboards, doing the planning, there was putting the XPS sheet on, then the first modular board that was done with the full scenics being done, which was the siding, and I had a lot of fun doing that. Anyway, my name's Tris, and this is Double A Neil. And on this episode, we're going to be looking at the station. And the station is probably the most complicated in regards to track because we're going to have a passing loop. And on this episode, I'm going to talk to you about how we're going to do it. But before we go any further, I want to say a big thank you to my patrons and channel members. If you'd like to become one, please click below. You can look in the description at the patrons. Moving to the layout, what have we got here? This is a scale model sceneries baseboard which we've stuck some XPS sheet on which you saw in episode 3. After that I've used some backing paper for wallpaper so it's a liner that goes on it's quite thick we stick that on because the material colour is darker but we want to paint that a lighter blue so we put a obviously a surface that means that we only have to put a little bit of paint on. The paint I've used is Toulon. Get this from B&Q. This is by Good Home, the wall and ceilings colour tester. Two pounds a pot and so far one pot has done two of the lengths. Um, I think really to do this and the you know the, well, the next two um, we just need another pot but I got them already. What are we going to do here? Quite simple. I'm basing this off a part of the Vela Rider Railway. If you haven't already seen the images and bits that I want to do, go check out the second episode, but I'll be putting little bits in here that you can enjoy as we're doing this. The Vela Rider, I've not been there, but I've seen pictures, and it's a great Western Railway narrow gauge line, which for me uh, is exciting because I model a narrow gauge when I do my normal double O gauge, large standard um, gauge track. Um, so I've been enjoying um, you know, the fact that I'm, I'm doing that now. Even though what I'm doing, you might look at and thinking, oh, well, that could be anywhere. That's fine. But for me, I've got some motivation and inspiration from various images that I've seen. So for this, we'll have our passing loop. And I'll be using the points that I picked up from Tony's Train to Rugby. Uh, Tony's Trains of Rugby, well Tony, um, who is the business owner, um, has kindly encouraged me to come and do this project. And it's to build it up in time for Statfold Barn Model Railway Show, which is on April 1st and 2nd. If you're watching this in the future, I'm afraid you missed it, but there's probably some more video of this. Um, but it's coming up soon and I hope that you'll enjoy it when you do come. I'll be there exhibiting my three meter layouts. It will have two meters of scenic, half a meter each end of fiddle yard. So I picked up these from Tony's Trains um, and these are the, the, the main line kind of larger um, points that are available. And I'm gonna have one at one end and one at the other. What I wanted to do was have two that are slightly different. So when you do your passing loop, we'll do a top view in a second, you'll see a bit more of what I mean. Um, we'll have the track coming out like this, and this one coming out and coming straight to here. What I wanted to do was where it gets to the forest end, which would be down that way, um, we'll end up having lots of bushes and trees, and the track will be further this way, and it'll kind of go more towards the back, so it'll be the loco kind of disappearing a bit in, in some sense. And eventually on the last uh, modular board is the where the bridge is going to be we're going to have the river underneath it and that's going to be interesting it's going to work its way back over that hopefully that's the plan we've got half a meter on each board that sounds like a lot in in some sense but it's really not when you're trying to work out where to get things and that's why i've come to my bit of uh, wonder on how we're going to do this so grabbing a bit of track we lay this here and we lay that here. You can imagine we're gonna have some curves coming out here and into here. It's not gonna be that exaggerated really. This will be about here. This will be more like here. Um, and that'll be there, really. And so you have the, the divide like that. Um, I've got to be very careful in one sense because I don't want to have the coaches 
knocking into each other as it comes past. I've been encouraged by a number of kind friends. That one's not got wheels underneath it, it's only got one set of wheels. All right, there we go. So when a loco comes past, the you know, on a passing loop, because one's sitting there, one's ready to go, I need to make sure these are sufficiently over so when the loco comes past, it misses it. So then how long can my trains be? I'll have a loco, oh, then I'll have things behind it. I was thinking about it quite a lot and you end up thinking, well, I just need to have a line with a station on it. Okay, fine. If we do that, we're going to lose some operational interest. I need to be able to enjoy flicking the points so then we can work on main flicking and having the other. So one can pass and then the other one can get going again. What can I do to improve this? Oh, you could say, we'll have it at an angle going like this. Well, that's great, but it doesn't come in here. It comes in about there and we're gonna check that in a minute. And on this side, fine, we can have that over there. So maybe we can bend the track round to do it, but then our station starts looking a bit odd. Or maybe that doesn't matter, who knows. Um, so we'll have a play with our bits. So part of the inspiration is at the station that I'm modeling. I don't even want to mention the name. I'm just gonna put some writing up just down here. I asked Tony if he could pronounce it and he did said I don't even want to try. Um, so my attempt is, uh, well, we can get the book out and have a look and have ask Google maybe. I'm anyway, so that'll be here. On that halt, where it is, it's a halt, um, it had this nice little water tower. Um, I looked at the size and everything. I think this could be a little bit bigger to make this one work. Um, we'll have our loco, let's see, sitting here. Um, we then have put a bit of uh, Fomex just there. And we have our little halts that I modelled up based off the one that I saw in the picture. Tried to judge it nicely. We're going to end up cladding this up with some plastic and make it look really nice. But that will end up sitting, let's say, about here as it then comes past. Um, and then obviously we're going to knock back um, a lot of this area. The idea is that I want to have this rounded edge which you've seen on some of the other bits. So I'll be rounding it off here um, and then working around all the bits that we're doing. If I end up taking off too much I can always add back if I need to. So that's kind of the, the main topics kind of gone over for this. So what I want to do is get the next board, we'll screw it together and we can look at possibly fixing this down but we also want to run some wires off it so we have power to that point so when we're switching and everything and when it's going from one line to the other it's got power and it doesn't stop you might remember the siding module from the last episode what we're going to do because of where the point connects up I need to mark where that's going down and the only way to do this is I need to bolt them together and by doing that we'll be able to work on our future alignment. So I'll put these on their, their backs, pop the bolts in and go from there. But you can watch as we're doing it so you can get an idea of how we're doing it. So just on the inside of here, I've got my two holes. So the boards are, as you saw them before, nice and simple. In one way, so we've just got the two holes that line up. And by putting it on the, their backs, they're going to hopefully sit pretty square with each other on their sizes so we can get a good gauge of how it's all going but to, to make sure that everything's stuck down on the layout properly otherwise you might have a few difficulties here and there but so we're it together we'll get an idea now for how it will be in the future and you can do these with all your fingers and if you can't you can probably get some tools on there if you want but I'm happy with how that's sitting put the wires through there so they don't get in the way in the same with the other side stand back up make some noise and you can see what we're working with now here look at how these bits sit together they're quite snug just there um, I guess at the railway show on the day you know we can adjust and make it work. You can see that we've got the shape there, we don't have it here. And uh, yeah, so our point will be sitting just here. The level on this other side is slightly higher, so we have to make sure that we adjust for that. So then when we bolt this together, these two bits are touching each other. And at the moment there's like a, a half a millimetre to a millimetre gap below. 
well, what I will do before gluing anything in place is I was saying before about it they solder some wires on and because this is one track and that's one track that sweeps out there we're going to solder them on back here so we can leave the front alone and then when it comes to fixing it down in place rigid we can do that um, with some glue and make sure it's all lined up perfectly so when we screw it together again it should be in this place so we'll go about putting the wires on and that's going to be nice and simply we're going to cut off some of the plastic here and solder the wires on there then we need to make a mark drill some holes now what i want to do is make a mark so i'm going to line this up i'm going to push it up square so it's looking good and i want to put my wire underneath this one and underneath this one so i want to make a mark here so we can see all of that and drop the wires through there and i'm going to snip off those two webs that sit underneath in my last episode we used copper clad sleepers there because we were using flexi track but these points are very rigid so i'm going to go with the faith that they're going to be pretty tough and handle that okay just use my old wire strippers i've had these for many years so I've lost the spring for them but they still do the job the wire is 16 0.2 wire so it's got 16 strands of 0.2 millimeter wire in it if I can use my words going to do is I tin the wire what we do is when we wire it up at the moment I've got red at the front and black towards the back so black is that one so I flip this over so black is this one we'll tin the track first we could use the wonderful thing called flux to help us out to make this easier but with a good iron not the work's done so we tin that that one and this one which is a bit of a bigger gap got the iron set to 380 so obviously it's on the warm side put a little bit of solder on the track on the track <laughs> on the iron Make sure that's connected to the track. Do a little tug test. If it stays on, that's good. Flip it round, and that will stay on too. Again, put a little bit more in the solder. So soldering iron. Put more solder on the soldering iron. Okay, done the pull test those two wires on and you can't really see them we'll put the holes in there poke the wire through and then we can look at permanently holding this in place but we also need to think about what's happening with the changing of the points am I doing this by hand but what I was thinking about doing was using a metal tube coming in here with a little metal rod I've seen lots of other people do it in the magazines and things over the years um, so then we can change the points manually there on this one I decided not to do it I'm feeling like maybe I should have but that's one of those things we can change our mind whenever we like got my long drill bits which you saw in the last one I can't remember where I picked it up but these things are available and out there so we'll drill our hole it doesn't take much to get through the XPS almost pushes through so you're just going to let it guide itself through put itself through and then we make our hole And just clean the hole out. So we'll try and fill, well, poke that through. That's that one. And then we'll poke this one through, try and make sure it's straight. 
now this is in place I want to show you the brass tube which I'm using it's a two millimeter brass tube and I'm using a 0.7 millimeter nickel wire in here we're going to bend that as a hook on there and then that's going to go sliding into here and we'll use that to control the point I need to kind of build this into the ground here first so we can operate the point without um, having to dig it up afterwards because this is going to get glued down and held in position uh, that's very important so I need to put that in there so then we can put bits over the top and the tube will protect this wire from getting caught up so what we do first is we'll draw a little line we can dig it out with a scalpel drill a hole in the back we can mark that out um, and then we can we can fit it to a certain point hold it down do a quick test and then we can glue that also in place so we can have that operating Let's come along here with the tube we can dig this bit out okay and once that's done we'll drill a hole that's in the back here you can't quite see it okay so that's the V here is that deep enough for this to sit in? I'd say so. So we'll cut this to length. We'll have it so it pokes through slightly. We'll bring it to about here. There it is. And that pops through there and you can break it off. And we have our nice round bit there. What you can do is you can clean it up. Just run your scalpel blade into the end give it a spin around, open up that hole and also it's not so pretty on the outside so we're just going to get a file and just gently clean up the outside edge so that's going to be just there get rid of the excess there so our tube will go through there it will mount here and then we'll have our little wire coming through there to hook on here. So this is our nickel silver wire. And we'll grab our tube and all we do is we're going to poke that through here to find the end. So we want basically like a handle that we can work with. So I'll snip off that. And all we want to do is bend up the end to do the job. You know, we can, we can knock this down on height afterwards. So we've got our bend in here, okay? And that's going to be going through the point. And you might be wondering, why am I doing this? Well, I don't want to get any electronics involved for point motors. I find it a lot of fuss. It'd be easier not to do it. And that's kind of my feelings on it. For some reason, I've always avoided them. So all we need to do now is poke that through, if I can. Hopefully this doesn't break after... 50 <laughs> forward and backwards so that sits there okay so if that stays still if I grab the other side with my hand I can do that great right this has been done by so many people when I see it in the um, magazines but more recently I saw it was the guys from Budget Model Railways um, did this um, and I thought I, I like that I need to incorporate that one day so um hello to the guy if you guys are watching um love your channel always have done since i got into the hobby so yeah so what we do is like i said glue it we'll pack this up and then glue that in place too So that's going to sit there, we're going to pin that in place but before I do that I'm going to use some rail joiners and the first ones that I'll use are insulated ones which will go on the middle two here. The reason I'm using them on the middle two is because as what I understand when we flick across here being that they're electro frogs we'll end up shorting things out. So just on the middle two we'll do that um, and we'll power them up separately so then they get powered appropriately um, but when you're changing continuity 
when this one is live and touching that frog, you're shorting out on that one, and when you're touching this one, oh, let me just drop that in place. Let's pop back there. Yeah, we'll be shorting out that one. So it's it's quite simple, really. You probably need to put one on it, um, but if I put two on this one, I can then use the metal ones on the other end. There we go. So that sits in there <laughs> at an angle. Come on. Okay, so that's now sitting there. And then we can put some metal ones on the outside, and then hopefully we can just poke the track onto the top of it. These are the metal ones, which on the previous episode I said work on N gauge, TT, and W9. So it should only need two, but I always end up losing one in the end of my thumb. some pins on here and we're going to use some PVA glue to hold it down. The reason we're using PVA glue is because if we ever have to get this back up um, it'll be easier to lift it off with you know hot water and stuff like that. Um, that's got a large head on it so we won't use that one. flexi track which is the mainline type. My points actually look like the irregular type where the, the sleepers are ending but there's only one type from what I understand. So what I want to do is with this flexi track I want to come down to the here. So this would be then mirrored, well mirrored to be rotated around um, and brought around to there uh, for that one. So then our exit point for the track is more over here, which is something that I was looking forward to, to having. Uh, I want to try and keep things straight just to simplify the crossing over to the next modular piece. So what I want to do is work out this bit, and maybe even work out that bit before I fix this down, because I remember in the loft when I played with it, with the narrow gauge parts, it was a bit tricky. So we'll trim it to length. we get our pen, we have the Dremel, Just trim off the sleeper. We can add these back in later. What's always good to do is to clean up the, the edges. So what I do is with the Dremel is the faces. So what we do is we'll slide this in place and get this one figured out. Hopefully do the same with the other. Then we can bolt the point down afterwards. So it goes in there. And then that's connect up to that one. Yeah, that should work. It's not a pretty passing loop, but it'll do the job. slot this in. If I can see here one of these sleepers are going to touch so we'll just snip one of them out and it'll probably do it on the other side as well. It's not as bad as I thought. So 
So I'll pop a pin or two in to hold it. Because what we want to do is do the same work that we did before for our point down there. I've installed our other point. So we have our point control here and we have our point control on the other end. So nice and easy, put my finger on there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick everything down, space up this side in preparation for the other side possibly being too low, we just don't quite know. So I'll get some glue under that on that, like we did on the other end of the track, and we just have PVA glue holding everything in place. I feel like we can pop that there, and we can paint it underneath a lot of it. in other places, make sure well and truly stays in position. Okay, so that's that. Then we can manipulate these into our desired positions as well. We will let this dry. Um, this is all a bit soft at the moment. The pins will hold it in position whilst it's drying and hopefully when we pull the pins out it will stay where it is. I'll leave the pins in by the um, points ends, but on these I'll eventually take these out. I've got glue all over the track, but we can clean all that off with your finger initially, and then after that we can use obviously a track cleaner. With this, it's pretty much dry. Um, what I do need to do, and that I didn't do before, is actually add any power from this side of things. So we've already got power coming in from here, but we have got fish plates, which could cause us later issues. So you wonder, well, what should I, what should I do for that one? This is always going to have positive power running to the front. And when this, if I use the control that we have, when this touches here, this is obviously positive as well. Um, and that will send the positive line up there. But what you'll find, is it runs a positive line up here which is why we have the insulator here so it doesn't short out on this one so we need to get power to this one somehow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully after drilling a hole just in here if I get my pen to show you I want to basically power this outer edge and I've got to well, wire the point to all this so I'm going to rely on the fish plate to power this point or do I not rely on that? I don't know, I'm just having a think about it. I could put a power point here. So then if that fish plate goes, this is still powered. I can put a power point here. That'd be far negative. That'd be more hidden, that one. I'd also like to put, and this sounds quite busy, doesn't it? I'd like to put probably here because there's a split in the track or in the track, but in the fish plate underneath not fish plate but where the the chair the you know the molding just under here that uh, connects up I can't find my words put one here so it's quite a few actually six six connections and because these will be close might as well keep them close to each other it means that if all the fish plates die on me I'll have power on every section of track that I need which is very useful so one two three four five six so I'll cut some links and we'll solder some wires on
where we've cut away the sleepers from in here I'm just going to add in ones from the track that we've already got and you would have seen this on the previous episode go and check that out if you haven't already seen that episode it's a long one but this one will probably be long too and all we do is we slide these under here and they kind of pinch up a little bit but they'll be all right try and line it up nicely that sits about there and it'll look nice and then we're going to put another one in there we'll have to trim the length of it so we won't need all of the length of the sleeper so we'll cut a small angle we'll trim off the chairs again the reason we trim off the chair is simply so it fits underneath I actually trimmed that at the wrong angle so poor me right let's bring that over here and that can sit about here you get a better view than me on this one you can see that it's not in line so something like that all right when we put the ballast in that's going to hold it nicely anyway at the only other place i need to do it is just down this end again i'm just trying to trim it off here it's like one of the the fun easy things you can do when you're working on the layout and sometimes you end up going to ballast and you realize that you've got a bit of a gap <laughs> and uh you need to fix it pop it in without chopping off the chair on this one maybe no i've got the insulator on that one i thought because it's a little bit higher on this one i thought we can get away with it but we'll trim it out and then we can drop it in place nice and simple that drops in there and that goes in under here looks nice enough so what's next you say well this is dry as far as i understand this point is solid so i'm going to disconnect it from the board that's just here obviously if we just dial back a bit you can see we're still connected to that so we're going to disconnect um, and then we can focus on what we want to do next with this one thing that we do need to consider is the shape of the side here we will have to slice some of this off um, you could get a pen in there and make a mark um, no, I don't want to put any marks on the current stuff that's here so but we can come back and do that later but we can get an idea of what we're going to be trimming back so from here and going on one thing is we've got our water tank here i was thinking about having that here and the halt here but the negative part of having the halt here and that there is we actually lose a bit of track of what we see and the yeah so i like the idea of having them maybe both on this side um, and then we can have a small platform edge here and then it drops away here with a maybe a fence stopping the passengers falling off the side um, that's that's one thing i was thinking about uh, if you did have this here um, so that would be sitting about here um, obviously you have a platform be coming across here and you've got a fence that would kind of run away that come across here um, where we have this bit where we're going to have a bit of curvature matching this side um, we'd have to somehow you know bring it up quite quickly to here and have quite a bit of a steep bank coming off the back here i don't really like that i'd like to keep this nice bank on the front sit in there and even cut into it a little bit more around this area because we're going to have the forest this way anyway so i think as we would like to see people hanging out in front of the building water tower again now i want to have some kind of bushes building up behind here so we can have maybe some just high bushes i'm um, using a horse hair or even a bit of polystyrene build this into the back of that um, we need to uh, consider we've got our point changing here so I've actually got a kit I picked up this little uh, lever ground and frames kit I need to put that together we'll do that shortly um, and that's so then we can change I guess the signals um, obviously if, if there are any on it as well as the points um, and that can sit 
uh, about here maybe or I can have it on the other side here not really sure yet I'll build that a little bit later on and we can fit that in place and work out exactly where it's going also I am aware of the grass before on this side is very long um, so I actually want to have some more calm thickness of grass on this side so it's been a bit more kept um, I also need to think about how people are going to be getting around walking around and um, getting to this area I just can't have grass growing everywhere in bushes but I think uh, you know like a path maybe um, past here um, again behind the bushes like we had on the other one but I don't want to get repetitive on that so I need to have a little think about that um, where I am with this stage um, I'm actually going to be going away for a week um, off to Arizona part of work so I won't get as much done <laughs> in this week as I planned um, but that's that's fine it gives me time to have a little think about what I want to do here I'll take some pictures do some sketches whilst I'm away so when I come back I can carry on when I get back I'll only have about three weeks to get all of this done which adds a little bit of pressure um, to this but before I go I think what I'll do is I want to add in the platform um, edge so I want to add in platform across here for this to sit on we can go back a certain amount um, and I think we'll have a f possibly some platform on the frontage here um, that's one thing that I was thinking about but really not sure um, what I want to do there um, is it that the passengers can get out onto stones um, that are standing out there so it's kind of they get right down onto the floor or do we have a raised section using this foam board um, popping that in place this foam board is a bit springy it's it's not very flat it's been in the loft for a couple of years <laughs> but it'll be fine to put down and, and pin down in place so that'd be no trouble at all I'll be putting something on the top of it so I think what I do um, is we'll definitely put a platform up here we've got to work out the sizes fit it all on um, get it round and like I said I'm going to be putting a surface on it so we can cut it into pieces put it on I think about even using uh, something as simple as uh, sandpaper to be as the surface um, but uh, I'll have a little think about that one um, and we'll go from there uh, so yeah so I have a good putting a platform in and, and have some fun here and then we can get to this bit and decide what we're going to do maybe we have a slim one um, it's kind of what would be about four foot deep in scale so that's four eight twelve um, 16 millimeters of a platform going around here with a fence and then this does drop off quite aggressively um, off there and we kind of we work out a nice way of doing that um, yeah so it's pretty exciting uh, pretty fun um, so let's get this platform on Okay, so that will sit like that. Our building go on there. So what I do is I'll put this in, use some pins to hold it down whilst it's gluing. Oh, I think that will be about right. I'd have the bushes kind of growing down over the top here, kind of finishing here, working their way to about here, building up behind there, a bit of banking. Um, I don't know what to do behind here just yet. Don't need to really think about that this minute, but um, genuinely pleased with how it is <laughs> see always wanting to adjust and trim which is fine we talked about this before putting the bogeys on it is tricky don't know if I'm looking forward to running these <laughs> um, so that will come here Be right, and then if we get a loco, comes across. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I'm I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, let's glue that in place. I'll make a few marks of my pen. 
things are sitting ready for when I put it back down with the glue and get the pins out. We have our pins. We have some glue. So, nice and simply, we'll stick it on. What it is to control the glue to make sure we actually glue it down. This should be more than enough. Going to spread it around. It's a nice nozzle on this one. Get that. Drop that in here. It's not going to dry instantly. We've got time to to move things around. It's not like it's super glue. And then we'll just pop our pins in, so then it will hold it down and flat, because as I showed you before, it wasn't very flat, was it? I thought I'd take a moment whilst talking. Is um, we got to 10,000 subscribers. Uh, and uh, very happy. And thank you for all, all of you for subscribing. Really, really pleased. Uh, I actually thought I wasn't going to get there, it took a long time, um, but everyone has their own path and journey in all of this, and there's been a lot of kind people along the way, supporting the channel, patrons, support loyal subscribers, um, a lot of friends I've made through the hobby, which has been really nice, so I can only say thank you to all of you who've been, yeah, constantly kind and helpful, and yeah. Give me encouragement, really, because it takes a lot of effort doing these videos. So, yeah, thank you. So we're just sticking these in. There we are. Just a little bit more. Just maybe one more here. And I'll probably put one more just here. And we'll pull these out later on, and then we can put our top surface on what we're going to use but that will be when I get back from Arizona, really. So if we just position that, that will be sitting about there. Then we'll have our little building to sit in here. Yeah, I think it's going to look smart. Yeah, I've decided to go for it. I've tried to make a mark by pushing it into the track. And you can just pick it out here. If you didn't already realise, this is foam board, which you get from Hobbycraft or any other place that sells foam board. <laughs> um, it's easy to work with, it's soft. And uh, with a sharp knife, cut it through. Oh, it's a doddle, anyway. And that will come in here. It'll look about right just there. So that, that works out nicely. Just need to cut a piece of basically a parallel section. It's my plan. So that is our other platform. So that can sit down here. leave enough of a gap. Not the other way around is it? It kind of works that way but go and plunk this down. Smooth it around a little bit. So that would be like this. It's starting to come together isn't it having it like this. Just pop three in this one. Got one pin there. One pin here and one pin here. There we are. So, what do you think? Is this uh, <laughs> working out? Um, I think it'll be fine. I'll just run a low key backwards. Loads of clearance. So, that'll come across here. Keep on the track. Yeah, be fine. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a fence going back on here. 
and right behind the fence I want it to really drop off so we can cut out some of that material behind it. Um, I think we'll do a chunk of that so then we don't disturb any of this when we're trying to cut it. Um, so I'll get my knife out and start hacking away so then we can create our contour that we're after. Okay, we've got our shape on the front here. I need to match the the other board that we've been playing with, um, but ultimately it will become around here. My grass I stick on. I'm a bit. I think I think I need to have the fence, and then the bushes growing up behind it. So yeah, the grass will kind of stop here, and I don't want it to be overgrowing by the the track as it goes out so much. Um, my reason being um, that I don't want to have um, it kind of coming higher than the platform. So what I want to do is where you stop it in here, blend it in in a way where it kind of reduces down and then some normal grass from two millimeter with some flock and stuff like that. Um, and then back here it all grows back up. Again, I need to think about what we're gonna do here because it's a flat area. Um, yeah, what do I what do I add, uh, really? Um, so yeah, I have a little think about this area. It could be just a car park, you know, a little area with a few bicycles and things where people have come in. Who knows? Not really sure yet on that one. Um, and I've got to blend it into the background in some way. So again, I'm not really sure uh, what to do about that. Um, yeah, so um, I think the next step um, really is to let it all dry. Um, I'll come back when I get back from Arizona. Um, I'll put some little clips of America in. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I won't. Um, but yeah, when I get back, we'll we'll continue, which will then be I will then ballast. We will do the platform tops. Um, and then we can dramatically get the scenics done. I want to put in, like I said, the levers that I mentioned before. We need to clad the buildings, we need to do the water tower properly, put, put the back bits up. We're gonna have a lot of fun when we get to that stage. Hi guys, that's the end of the video. That's part one done. I'm currently in Arizona. You can see the, the palms in the background. I'm trying to find some cactuses for you, or cacti. Um, it's interesting, like some of the trees having green bark and everything. I have to put some on the video, so it's quite kind of gets you thinking about if I did an American layout, like what would I do? So that's kind of cool. So yeah, so I'm over here doing some work for um, what well, company that I work for. Um, we I do RC car design. Uh, it's pretty cool. So I just put a couple of clips up here where you can see the cars going around. It's pretty cool. The jumps and bits and bobs like that. I do the hobby. It's a little bit at the end of the video. I thought I'd talk about. Um, you know, I do the model hours um, as my kind of re relief from uh, from doing my job because my job was my hobby. So anyway, uh, it's been great you guys watching and that was part one. There was a lot of work to be done on it, uh, even though it doesn't seem like it. You know, you put loads of hours in that was when it's editing, it's kind of three hours worth of editing and that's not all that I've recorded. And so I'm like, Let's, let's wrap this up. Um, it's sometimes a bit much. You guys having to watch a two hour video on one go, lose track and maybe move on. So the next video we'll be doing all the scenics, building out the buildings, um, yeah, adding some trees. Won't be adding any palm trees in. They won't be looking like these ones behind me here. Just a bit tall for my little layout. But maybe we need to do a palm tree on a layout somewhere sometime in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening as always. I appreciate all your patience listen to me chat away i get so many kind comments from you all um so many times i've had people talk about my the way that i sound the way they go about doing things which is quite nice um i'd like to be calm it's my favorite thing um it's not so fun being exciting um yeah 
anyway thank you as always for watching thanks to my patrons and my channel members the support is always appreciated gives me that extra bit of encouragement knowing that you're behind me my subscribers you're always brilliant leaving me comments hitting like and obviously keep subscribing if you're not already a subscriber uh, all it means is that you don't miss out on my future bits because it will come up hit that bell button as well that bell button means that you won't miss one later on like notifications that come up on your phone or computer or whatever it'll pop up that double o'neill has done a video anyway as always thank you and i'll see you soon take care bye, -bye.